Now, show business is a bumpy road, and we can pave that road for you. And at the end of any paved road, there'll be a toll. Hi, I'm Adam Ferrara, and this story is kind of sketchy. Now, I started doing stand-up in New York, and there was this little club in Brooklyn, right off the Bell Parkway, that I used to work all the time. Now, I'm not going to mention any names in this story, and as it unfolds, I'm sure you'll see why. Believe me, this is going to be a good thing for the both of us. Now, the patrons of this club were varied. Some were suspects, and some were just people of interest. If you were doing any kind of crowd work, the answer to the question, and what do you do for a living, was usually, I do things, okay? Now move on, traveling clown. So the I do things people would come to the late show on Friday nights with their girlfriends. And if they liked the show, they would come back Saturday night with their wives. I don't know why either, but this is what would happen. So one Friday night late show, a guy comes in. He has no neck, a cauliflower ear. He smells like someone put a cigarette out in an ashtray filled with polo cologne. And he's got a skyscraper blonde on his arm. She chewed gum real fast. But to her credit, she did not pop the gum during the show. Because after all, she was a lady. Now the show was going along fine. At some point, the blonde got up and went to the bathroom. And while she was gone, I did a joke about my girlfriend yelling at me and transforming into a pterodactyl. It's not a great joke, but I was a young comic and it worked. It worked so well, the guy with no neck went, (laughs) And when his girlfriend came back, he yelled out, Do the bird joke again. I said, what? And he said, Do the bird joke again. So quickly, I said, Here's one of my favorites, and I did the joke again. And again, he went, (laughs) He shoved the blonde shoulder, and she said, Oh, Sal. And then after that, we could all move on. So the show ended, and on the way out, the blonde came over to me and said, You are a pisser. Now, if you're not familiar with this term, it's a good thing. The guy said, She's right. You made me laugh. And he reached out to shake my hand. And in his palm was a hundred dollar bill folded in this neat square so you could see the 100 right on the square. I had no idea how he did it. It was like Gindaloon origami. They left and the owner turned to me and said, how are we going to see him again? And sure enough, the next night, Saturday night, eight o'clock show, the place is packed. Just as the show is supposed to start, No Neck comes back again. But now, he's with Mrs. No Neck. Now, after the owner personally showed them to the table, he shoved his head into the green room and said, Hey, we got company tonight. Don't say nothing about nothing. Now, I'm using the term green room loosely. It was a narrow space behind the sound booth with a homemade angled door to accommodate the staircase. And you were in there with a black and white TV, two chairs, a table, an ashtray, and the hot water heater. Basically, it was the boiler room under the stairs. But it was painted green, so there's that. The show went great. I killed. I did the bird joke, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw No Neck give me a nod that I swear nobody else saw but me. Obviously the product of years of nonverbal courtroom communication. Now, after the show, I was sitting in the boiler slash green room just packing up my stuff when the owner summoned me to the lobby. He was restocking the cigarette machine as he spoke to me. He said, ah, you know, you did great. You really know how to work my club. You show up on time, you wear a jacket, you know what to say, and more importantly, you know what not to say. Now, here comes the sketchy part. We would like to help you with your career. Now, this got my attention. Not because of the possibility of career advancement. The fact that he used the term we and he was the only one there. He went on to say, Show business is a bumpy road and we can pave that road for you. Ah, we make it nice and smooth. It'll be a beautiful road. It'll take you wherever you want to go. And at the end of any paved road, there'll be a toll. Okay, I had the same reaction you did. I said, well, well, I mean, this is this is a big step. Uh, I want to thank you guys for considering me. Um, may I take some time to think about it? He said, sure, take all the time you want. 
He put the last pack of Paul Malls in the cigarette machine and put his hand in his pocket. And then he said, I know I owe you some money for the show, so here's 50 bucks, and what do you smoke? I took a pack of Marlboro Lights. I still haven't answered him, and I never did the bird joke again.